Aloha friends, it's Craig and Maria Emmerich. We're here and we're owners of Keto Adapted. We've been helping people for over 20 years transform their life and we have the testimonies to prove it. It's pretty awesome how food can change your life. And one of the things that we help people do is get off sugar. We know that sugar is very inflammatory, and so sometimes we will use something called erythritol, which is in the news big time right now, and we want to tell you all about this little study. And so we're, we're pretty uh, rigid as far as the sweeteners we do recommend. I mean, we're mm -hmm. in the keto space, low carb space, we are very particular about the ones we, and there's really only four that we approve of, the erythritol, um, monk allulose, monk fruit, and stevia. stevia. And that's through a lot of research, a yep. lot of uh, trial and error, a lot of uh, just understanding what they're doing in our body and how they're metabolized. And uh, those continue to be our four sweeteners that we recommend. Um, the new study that came out supposedly linked erythritol to increased stroke and heart, heart attacks. And Which is freaking people out. Absolutely freaking people out in this uh, space. Um, so we want to talk about that and kind of break it down a little bit and hopefully put your minds a little bit at ease when it comes to The reason why we're so far apart is this little thing. Isn't yeah. she cute? She always has to be between us. So cute. <laughs> so uh, let's start out with, you know, the authors of the study to me is important because if they've had previous things like this, which let's just start out. These are observational studies. Yeah. They did not feed these people erythritol, which we'll get to later, a very important aspect of, of this. They don't even know if they consumed erythritol <laughs> sweeteners. So, you know, this is not, you know, a randomized controlled trial or anything like that. Um, and, and in this space, if this was about red meat and it was the same type of observational data, everybody would immediately dismiss it in this community. But because it's erythritol and there's people that are kind of skeptical about erythritol because it's zero calories and it sweetens like sugar. So, you know, I think that makes some people kind of skeptical. Yeah. Um, and so let's look at the authors of the study. First, um, one of the main authors is the same author who linked TMAO in red meat to cancer. So that was another observational type of study where, and this is, Still, today in the vegan vegetarian world, they still point to this as, yep, TMAO is the reason red meat causes cancer. And TMAO, guess what's really high in TMAO? Way, way more than beef. Halibut, cod, things consistently in other studies linking fish to, to being healthy. <laughs> to be healthier for heart disease and, and cancer and these things. So you, you say that the, red, the, red, the TMAO in red meat causes cancer, and yet other things which have clearly been shown to reduce cancer have way higher TMAO. Um, so I think that just kind of puts the skepticism hat on right away when it's the same person supposedly now linking erythritol to uh, these issues. So for me, one of the biggest things about this study that raises my, my uh, question marks is what was the diet of these people? They have no idea. It, it, was, it looked at simply uh, blood markers, uh, and then compared it to the outcomes later of, you know, did they have a stroke, a heart, heart attack, etc. cetera. Um, and that's a really important point here too, is that these were all, almost all metabolically damaged people. So they all are very at much higher risk for stroke and heart disease to begin with. They were sick people. They were, uh, I think mm. a fifth of them had diabetes, which Frankly, it, the definition for diabetes, they probably were all pre-diabetic pre yeah, yeah. due to their, their weight and whatnot. Uh, I think uh, a large number of them were also, uh, you know, higher risk for, they had a high blood pressure. Basically, they had diabetes, just undiagnosed. Um, and so, like, three quarters had high blood pressure or other issues. So, I mean, you're, you're studying a sick population to begin with, which really is kind of skewing the data to to begin with. But what was the population? Yeah, well, and what was their diet? Okay. Like, that's the key is, we have no idea if they even ate any erythritol sweeteners. 
there's a pretty good chance. I mean, keto is not, you know, there's not a ton of people doing this diet in the, if you go globally, right? And so there's a good chance that none of these people ate keto. None of these people ever had an erythritol sweetener. Other things can convert to erythritol. And so that's the, that's the uh, really interesting point here is that um, the body can make erythritol. So it can make erythritol from glucose. And so when it's, it's through the pentose phosphate pathway, PPP. Uh, what it does is it, it converts, it, it, the body can convert glucose into erythritol in the body. Okay. So were these people higher in erythritol in their blood? because they had so much glucose in their blood because they're diabetic and some was converting to erythritol? That seems like the more likely reason for what we're seeing in this study. Mm -hmm. um, because we have no diet data, we don't know if any of these people ever had a sweetener, uh, erythritol sweetened anything. Um, so that's, to me, that's the biggest point in this study. I is that, don't know, to me the biggest point is how many people are in the study. Well, and, and that's part of it too, is the, the me mechanistic part of the study, which was <clears throat> looking at, you know, do we, if we feed people erythritol, what happens to erythritol in the blood? And, and now they're trying to connect that back to the other data, uh, was on eight people. Eight and people. so, you know, that was pretty weak to begin with. Um, eight people. Yeah. So the other, th so let's dive a little deeper into erythritol and, you know, other studies that are out there on it, right? Not too long ago, there was another study that uh, took di people that were diabetic and gave them 36 grams of erythritol per day, which this study was talking about 30 grams as being like the some death. sort of limit and, and causing these huge problems. Uh, 36 grams of erythritol a day were given to these diabetic uh, patients and they showed, they did some tests and it improved small vessel endothelial function. <laughs> And it uh, also improved uh, central a a aortic stiffness mm. when it was used chronically. They, they kept you know, doing this for a period of time and it reduced aortic stiffness, both of which lower your cardiovascular risk. Wow. So the study is showing erythritol actually lowering cardiovascular uh, risk in this other Bring study. Bring it on. Right? So, uh, you know, that's, that's just another data point. And then uh, there's another study that showed that erythritol may actually act as an uh, antioxidant. And so, uh, in it, in it even showed that erythritol may be better for gum health and, and whatnot than xylitol. Oh, good. So, you know, act as an antioxidant. It improves endothelial function. It improves... Uh, aortic stiffness, all of which reduce cardiovascular health. risk, and yet this one study seemingly points the other direction. So, uh, for me, uh, given the you know the author, given the lack of any knowledge whatsoever about what these people ate and if they ever even had any erythritol in their diet, and was it just the body, the body with this excess glucose because they're all diabetic? converting it over to some of that glucose over to erythritol in the body and thus that's what's causing this connection probably that's probably what i'm gonna go with <laughs> so are we still gonna use it yep yep do we let our kids still have it yep um i think it's I you it. know as as with any sweetener it's totally fine you know in moderation we don't you know, generally say people should be eating desserts every day necessarily. No, it but is good to like get the, that's why we wrote a book about how to get the sweeteners out. Yep. But of course, I'm going to tell everybody the truth. I have something a little sweet every single day, but it's kept me on this diet for m March is tomorrow. It's 26 years, 26 years. But it's because I do not feel deprived because I do have ice cream and I do have things that are, delicious and I don't feel deprived at all and that's what I love about this diet um, well especially when you have kids yes. you know and you want to have give them have treats and and have you know birthday cakes and things without all the sugar yep I think these are the, the sweeteners that the four sweeteners we recommend are safe and uh, yep. we give them to our kids and our family and we're we have no issues uh, recommending to clients so if you have thoughts on this topic, we'd love to hear your comments or see your comments below on whether it's helped you 
lose weight, feel great, get off sugar, whatever, whatever your comment is, we'd love to see it. So comment below and make sure to share this video with your friends who are thinking erythritol is going to kill you. Yes, please it's not. do. Thanks everyone. If you want to change your life, like I've changed mine with food, I would be honored to help you. Many of you don't know that I was twice my size. I had acid reflux. I had PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. I had depression. I had IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome. And food changed my life. And not only did that happen, I get to eat good food, right? Good food. So if you want to eat good food, have perfected meal plans made by me and personal help with supplements or modifications if you have Hashimoto's, if you have uh, Graves, if you have IBS, if you have PCOS, contact me. I would be honored to help you. Um, you can go to keto-adapted.com and find a lot of different options there for personalized help or message me uh, by commenting below on this YouTube video or you can check me out at mariamindbodyhealth.com. Mahalo.